Let's turn our attention to monetary policy using the ISLM model. We know that monetary policy means that a government pushes up the money supply in order to hopefully get something like increased economic growth. So we're going to start with the ISLM model, which we're going to set it up in equilibrium. You'll get used to me doing this. we got the goods market down here. That's AE hitting the 45 degree line right there. So that's Y1. We'll put Y1 right there, and that puts us on this point at the ISLM curve. We have the market for money, MS, which gives us that point of equilibrium, so we get that interest rate, which pushes us at that point on the LM curve, liquidity money curve, so we're in dual equilibrium. We got the intersection of IS and LM, so this market is in equilibrium, and this market's in equilibrium, and this is a good place to start. Nothing needs to change here. So let's enact monetary policy by pushing the money supply up, and to do that, we know the government is in control of the money supply, so they can just increase the money supply by sliding that out. We move from MS1 to MS2, and when that happens, we arrive at a new point of equilibrium for interest rates. So I goes from I1 to I2. Well, we know that. We want monetary policy to push interest rates down, because that, at least expansionary monetary policy, because then that encourages investment. Okay, so now we move to this point of I2. I2. So we were at this point. That point's no longer any good. That's the point for LM, right? These points all represent the old money supply. We're not on the old money supply anymore. So that point has drifted down to there. Think etch a sketch, left and right, up and down. And so all the points on LM have to shift down, similar to that one. So you get a new LM curve, which looks like that. Let me just label that LM1. That's more complete. Okay, so we've lowered interest rates. That's the whole idea of expansionary monetary policy. But we're not done there. We know we're not done because we're now operating at this point, and this point is clearly not dual equilibrium. So something's got to change. But we also know right off the bat that when interest rates drop, investment increases. And when investment increases, then AE increases. So let's go ahead and increase AE. So AE goes from AE1 to AE2, right? Investment gets bigger. So the whole stack gets bigger. That pushes AE up. And we move this point of intersection with the 45 degree line from there to there. And we go from Y1 to Y2. So now this dot slides out to, I'm going to cheat a little bit and put it because the IS curve doesn't actually move on this. So only the LM curve moves because this is an LM event, right? We're in the money, uh, money market or the market for money. So we move from that point to that point. So we started right here and now we drifted down there. That was the MS increase. And now we're going from there. That was the increase in investment. But we're not done because clearly not, we're not in equilibrium. So something else has to change. What might that be? Let's bounce back up to this. How do we do that? Y has gone up from Y1 to Y2. So MD is going to go up. When MD goes up, we do this. Don't move this one out very much. It tends to work better if you move it out just a tiny little bit. MD2. In fact, I even did it too much right there. So let's call that there. And I'm going to cheat just a little bit and call that I3. That's I3, and I'm going to bring that a little bit down there and call that I3. And then here we move out to there, right? So that's the effect of incomes going up, having an impact on our money demand. We've now gone from there to there to there to there, or we do, so you can see it there to there to there to there. But we're still not in equilibrium. We're out there in limbo somehow. However, what's happened is I went from I2, now back up to I3, and when we go back up to I3, we know higher interest rates is going to reduce investment, so I'm going to put an AE3, and I'm going to cut it right in between those to the extent that I can, try to put it right in the middle, and I'm going to call that Y3, Y3, and from there, I'm going to wind up at that point, and then there we go, back over to that, and we get back to that point which now leaves us in equilibrium. We have a new point of equilibrium where LM2 equals IS1. That's that point right there, macroeconomic equilibrium. We're equilibrium in both markets at the same time. So what's happened out of all this? Y went up and then came back down again. But at the end of the day, Y1 to Y3, Y goes up. Monetary policy pushed money supply up, and that means that GDP went up and income went up. That was the goal. That's what we want to see happen. That was the goal there. What do we get with it? 
I goes from I2 to I3. So we have a little bit of a round trip again, but we started at I1 and we ended at I3. So interest rates go down. This is the double outcome. You'll recall in fiscal policy, we got Y went up and I went up. In monetary policy, Y goes up and I goes down. Where we're headed next with this is the difference here is I going up or I going down, that's going to have an impact on the value of your currency because we know covered interest parity is going to cause money to flow around very quickly when this number starts changing. So that's monetary policy in an ISLM framework.